Meat Boy is back and we are making some venison tartare. And the difference between this and beef tartare is mainly the flavor of the base ingredient, venison. It's wild, it has a super strong, minerally, almost even gamey flavor in some cases. So the spices and things we're going to use here are certainly different. Let's go over those ingredients. You'll usually see some of these ingredients in a classic beef tartare recipe. However, not all of them are typically used at once. Uh, for the seasoning, we do have the classic salt and pepper. However, we're adding juniper, which goes very nicely with the wild venison. We have several pickling, like fermented agents, I would call them. Uh, the vinegar to put some shallot in. That's going to add some brightness, some acidity. We have mustard cornerstones, capers, each of which bring a little depth of fermented flavor, complexity, acidity that's going to really cut through the tartare. Lemon juice, some more brightness, some freshness, serving it on sourdough bread. Of course, we have some first light venison from Frankie's Syringe Meat. And I'm not actually going to be using an egg yolk today. I really don't like egg with venison. It just doesn't pair well to me. Uh, if you had some type of like quail egg or wild egg or something different, maybe. I just don't think it adds to it because the flavor of the venison is so, so strong. Egg yolk makes it kind of funky. So we got our venison here. So I cut the venison lengthwise into strips like that. Lengthwise again and cut it into tinier strips. And we take those strips and we go across to finish the cut. So to get the shallots really thin, you take a layer of it, you put it flat on the cutting board, and then you cut as thin as possible. And then go the other way. So we're gonna take about a tablespoon of shallot and put it with some apple cider vinegar. Let that sit for a minute. And then after about a minute, what you wanna do is strain the vinegar off the shallots. And then we have the shallots like this. So for the cornerstone, one pickle, maybe a teaspoon of capers. We're just gonna dice that up as well. We got about a teaspoon each of the cornerstones and the capers. Maybe half a teaspoon of mustard. You wanna be really careful with this because your tartare will taste just like mustard if you put too much. Let us squeeze a lemon juice, get that mixed up. And now for our spice blend. So we're gonna do two parts salt, two parts black pepper, and then one part juniper. So half as much juniper as salt and pepper. <laughs> oh man, that's fucking potent. Oh, all right. Maybe a hefty pinch of our salt, pepper, juniper mixture. Mix that in. So ideally this sits for at least a couple hours, even overnight for the flavors to really meld and it will taste a lot better, but I'm hungry now, so let's try some. Outside of raw dairy, this might be the only approachable way you can get someone to consume raw animal products in their diet. Very important for highly bioavailable B vitamins, amino acid. We have those easily digested animal-based minerals. The other ingredients we're putting in here like the capers, cornichons, vinegar, shallot. Maybe there's a slight probiotic benefit. It's feeding your gut bacteria small amount of lactobacillus, but since the amount is so insignificant, it's mainly just seasoning the meat. And if you do add an egg yolk, you do have some fat soluble vitamins, but again, I would not recommend that with venison. Uh, the bread is simply carbohydrate energy, again, feeding our gut bacteria, uh, giving us some contrasting minerals to uh, the venison, which is animal-based, this obviously being grain-based, has a different mineral profile. Uh, this is bread alone again. I'm trying their French sourdough for the first time. Usually I just get the San Francisco sourdough. So uh, first let's try the tartare on its own without any bread. You don't really get the venison. Decent amount of pickled flavor. But tartare is designed to be eaten with bread because it's over seasoned. If you eat tartare on its own, it's supposed to be very potent. Uh, with the bread, that basically cuts through half the seasoning. So I like it with the bread. I would definitely let this sit for a little longer, let those flavors meld together, mellow each other out. You could toast the bread up with some butter and this will be 
a delicious and approachable way to get that raw meat into your diet. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. If you have any questions about the recipe, let me know down below. As I mentioned earlier, you can get the venison on frankiesfreerangemeat.com. If you guys could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and I will see you guys for tomorrow's video.